be Sharefile for Outlook. Um, so Sharefile for Outlook, um, very similar to um, you know, Sharefile for Windows. It's going to give you a lot of those Sharefile features, but it's going to integrate directly into you know, the, the desktop Outlook tool, which, which many people use on an everyday basis. They're always sending files. Um, you know, they're communicating with clients. They're requesting files. So this integrates directly into that. Um, so once you install that, you'll have an option at the, uh, the top banner uh, for Sharefile specifically. You'll log in with the same process as I logged in when I added a place into Word. I'll ask you for your account, your login information. And what this allows you to do, is, we'll go through some of the settings here, is um, it allows you to attach files directly from Sharefile. Uh, it allows you to request files and generate links to um, a specific folder within your Sharefile account or your file box, as Tip I showed earlier, which is that temporary storage location. Um, it also allows you to send encrypted emails directly through Outlook. So, um, you know, if you want the body of the message to be more secure and have a login to even view um, the body, the encrypted email is built into this tools too. Um, so one of the things I wanted to highlight here is for attachments. You can actually have the share file for Outlook automatically, um, automatically create a link for files that are larger than, let's say, 10 megabytes, whatever your email server might have a hard cap on. Uh, some services don't let you send files larger than 10 or 15 megabytes. It really comes down to what service and what your administrator has set up. Um, but you can have the system automatically convert those larger attachments to links directly to share file. So you're completely taking out the file from uh, within the email, and you're just giving somebody a link to access the file through your share file cloud. Uh, so our administrator has set a one megabyte automatic attachment here, and I'll show you after this where, if you're an administrator, you can change these settings. So it's set to one megabyte. So if I go in and, and I'm a user attaching a large file, um, one megabyte is pretty small, but it's just our example today. I have a file that's uh, roughly three megs. So I'm gonna drag and drop it here. And you can see the system already detects that it's larger than one megabyte and it creates that attachment uh, HTML code here. Um, this can be um, changed within your company branding. You can change how this looks, um, but this is just the default. It's gonna give a button that says download attachments, which goes directly to that file. And same thing with um, attaching files. So that was an automatic. If you wanted to actually attach a file manually, um, up at the top right, within the new email, uh, message window, we do have attach files here. We have request files and we do have initiate workflow. So if you wanted to just attach a file, you can do from PC or if the file is already within Sharefile, um, you can click this option. It's going to browse directly into your Sharefile account and we can go into our shared folders, go into our July folder and um, there's that test document that, that Tepe was working with. So we can simply select it Add it there, and you can see it actually modified the um, HTML to show the original file that I drag and dropped, and then that test file that I uploaded manually. Requesting files is going to work a little bit different, um, so we can actually customize these settings here. If we click custom, um, we can get notifications when files are uploaded. Um, you can set uh, permissions here, Anyone public is going to be, anyone can access it, whether you want just no information like name and email. Um, you know, email recipients is gonna require a sign-in, client and employee users after signing in, that's also behind a sign-in. So really you can get specific on how you want to um, request files. And this last option here, employee users after signing in, um, or I'm sorry, email recipients. This is going to be if you're sending uh, a request uh, link to somebody who's not in your Sharefile account. Um, so email recipients is going to create that user that you email. It's going to take their email address and it's going to register them as a client user in your account. And so once they receive that email and they're not in the system, they're going to have to go through the process of creating a client user within your account. So email recipients is, is a very commonly used one where um, you know, companies want to be secure when they collaborate with external parties. So they'll actually 
use email recipients so that the user is created in the system and they have to have a login. So there's more tracking, auditing, stuff like that, just more secure when you're requesting and sending links. And then the upload location is gonna be by default file box for requesting files. Um, you can also change that to any folder within ShareFile that you have access to. And so I did say I would show the administrative side. So all these settings in here, if I back out to my main Outlook window and I go into the options, you know, you saw some of these options are grayed out. So this is just something that is set up by the administrators. So if we go back into our share file account and you, you do have administrative access, we'll go into admin settings, we'll go into advanced preferences, and we'll go to enable share file tools. So you can see here the, the one we're looking at is the Outlook plugin. It is enabled for this account and you have an option to configure plugin. So when you go here, this is gonna look similar to all the options we had within the Outlook application. You can change the, um, the automatic, um, you know, creating a link. You can change this, let's say I wanted to change it to five megabytes instead of one. Um, the administrator has the option to, to make some changes here. Um, and then for other options, they're, they're, um, you, you can allow the users to change the settings like permissions and things like that. Um, so there's going to be options for prevent user changes and this will kind of trickle down to anyone using the application. So as an administrator and you want to use the Outlook plugin within your organization, I would highly suggest going through here and going through each, um, each tab here and really you know, change it to what your organization would really want in this application. You can restrict things, um, restrict sending uh, public links. Maybe you want only links that have a sign-in behind it, stuff like that. So super important as an administrator, come in here and configure that as well.